About a year or two ago, I wrote a Minecraft clone in Java and OpenGL, but I was starting to reach its limits. It was getting really slow, bloated, and overall hard to manage. So I decided to learn C++ and Vulkan and start again. On the Vulkan side of things, every single frame the GPU goes through two stages. First it goes through the compute stage and then the graphics stage. The compute stage, it renders the scene onto a texture and in the graphics stage, it draws that texture onto the screen. I also decided to switch the way I was rendering cubes in the world from rasterizing a bunch of triangles to ray tracing. Basically, all of the Vulkan is from a tutorial. All I pretty much did was write a couple functions which simplified doing all the repetitive tasks. After I had a basic triangle drawing on my screen, I decided to move over to compute shaders. I've never worked with them before, but they were pretty simple to pick up. I'm pretty sure this is what happened when I didn't initialize my variables in the shader. And this is what happened when I finally got it working. I chose to render the scene in a compute shader instead of a fragment shader because it gives you more control. Here, I'm getting very terrible frames per second but as soon as i make this one simple fix which is increasing the local work group size the fps skyrockets which is great so next up i tried to draw some more interesting things i first went to ray marching because it is super intuitive and really easy to implement but it turned out after a while that it was extremely slow. Next, I did try to ray trace some spheres, but it was super buggy, so I didn't actually get any footage of it. So lastly, the thing that I actually wanted to do was traversing an arc tree. So an arc tree basically just stores voxel data and traversing it is a little bit more complex. So the reason that you'd use a, um, an arc tree to store voxel data is because it is sparse, meaning that you don't have to store empty space. This means that in most cases, you can store the same amount of data in less memory. Another thing about arc trees is that fundamentally they are a tree structure, meaning that they are nodes which point to other nodes using edges. So what you can actually do is make one node point to itself, and then you get this kind of fractal. That's pretty much all I've done so far. Next up, I want to be able to write into the arc tree some kind of Perlin noise or height map data so that it actually looks coherent. Also, I would like to improve the ray tracing by adding multiple light bounces off of the surface. So that's a technique which can allow you to get more realistic looking, well, scenes. This would help me get cool effects such as shadows, reflections, global illumination, ambient occlusion, and more. I do intend to keep working on this for a little bit longer, but you never know. So that's all I have for today, and thanks for watching.